Okay, I'm now going to talk about bringing, uh, setting up for a, a st standard Sunday morning service with us. So here's the process that uh, you need to adopt to do so. So to start with, after you've turned it on, scenes, recall, EBC start. Now I'm actually going to cheat slightly here, I'm actually, because I need some signals, I'm going to be replaying by the USB replay function. So I'm actually going to use that one, but don't worry about that. So, we record the standard system. We then need to actually check that the channels are about right as we go through. So those channels will correspond to the labels we've pushed through here. Say we have a different instrument, say we have one come up on channel 8, select channel 8. So we can select, touch on anything, EQs is anything, bring back the library, and say this one is going to come in and be a electric guitar, bring back the channel library here, recall it. So that's now added the standard settings for electric guitar to the, to the channel. Now it doesn't actually change the name, so you might want to change the name as we showed previously. Touch that, touch in there, you can edit the name. So we have some music coming through, we have the equivalent of a band playing. So let's actually select one of them. Let's select the, the um, piano, go to the processing screen. As you can see here, we have got plenty of signal coming in. Um, there's the levels there. Now, we can actually hear it for a pre-fade listen. You'll hear that in the background, so I've actually mixed this into the, uh, into the system. Now you want to set the gain so that it is just and I mean just going into the yellow occasionally. That's probably a bit too hot, so we'll just turn the gain down just a little bit with the gain knob here. And use a dedicated gain knob. Now this, for, this is absolutely vitally important for this desk, folks, that you need, for everything apart from the radio mics, the gain should be set for an individual channel so that it is just touching the yellow occasionally on the peaks. Absolutely vital you get that because digital desks absolutely hate peak loaded. If they totally distort the mix if it peaks, you should never let a, a digital desk peak. So therefore, for everything apart from the radio mics, make sure it's up to the green. The only difference with the radio mics is that typically their levels are lower. The feedback occurs a bit earlier. That's the only one that you would get away without having to go all the way up to the green. So for the radio mics, so I select one here you'll see that actually the gain, not that there's anything coming off this radio mic at the moment, but the gain is about 38, and typically it will be peaking below the top. If you do overdrive a channel, then the desk has a number of red warning LEDs, which will give you indication of where the channel is, the problem is occurring. There's a peak LED on a particular channel, uh, the EQ section also has uh, red LEDs, as does the uh, mixer itself. So again, do not let a desk overdrive because the distortion it produces is particularly horrible on a digital desk. Um, the other danger is underdriving a stage. Uh, but we've set up this desk so that the gain structure is correct if you are just peaking on the greens for anything other than the radio mics. So don't be tempted to try and turn the volume down by turning down the gain level. If you do so, it'll mess up all the gain structure which we've set the desk up with. The other point to bear in mind is you need to select the right uh, DCA or group at, um, DCA for a channel. So as I said previously, DCA1 is used for doing the instruments and DCA2 is done for the vocals. So select any channel, doesn't really matter, hit the routing screen and down here the function key changes to show that it's mute DCA. Hit DCA, that button and then go DCA group assigns and here we have the two DCAs, DCA1, DCA2, and then I can add and remove items to it. So if I just touch and take it off, it takes items out. So DCA1, which instruments, it's got channels 1 to 8 on it. And it's also picked up a couple over here, 13 and 14. Um, if we were using it for something else, you just take them out. Uh, and then the vocals are on 1, 2 and 4. Again, if I wanted to bring those to another one, I can easily select those. Generally it should be set up correctly, but as I say, if you've got some, say you've got five vocalists and you need to patch them back through, you might need to change one of those channels to bring that through. Okay, we're now going to talk about setting up the EQ on a particular channel. 
So as I explained earlier, it's all on the processing screen. So here we have uh, the piano coming through, select piano, EQ channel. Say you think it's a little bit too bassy, we can just turn the gain down on the channel. We're turning it down. So generally you should just be able to keep those and bring those back as they are. Other thing on the channel as well as a compressor, but that's particularly useful on a clarinet. Because with the clarinet what you find is that when it goes to the upper register there's quite a difference in volume. So what we've done is a compressor here. So as the volume comes above a certain point, it actually gets um, the increase for music coming in doesn't get so loud. So it basically rolls off the uh, amplification factor as it scrolls through. So the compressor's there. The very actually compressing point is set by that knob there. So as I can see, I actually put in the volume. I put more compressor and it gets quieter. But again, I've set some of these up as starting points, so there shouldn't be a, a lot to have to worry about that. So that's compression. There's also a gate as well. If I bring on acoustic guitar, I had a problem with uh, this particular one here. When, it, when he was playing it, there was a lot of noise. When he wasn't playing, there was a lot of noise coming through. So the gate actually acts as a threshold and a cut off. Turn it on there, and you can select the threshold either with a dedicated knob or by touching that. So when you, put, when you get to a certain point, it'll actually cut off the music. So it's, like, it's far high. You can hear it's gone right down. As I say, one good use, if you've got an instrument such as a guitar or a bass that's quite noisy when it's off, you can use the gate just to set the threshold that just comes in. Generally, try and, try and find the problem rather than trying to fix it uh, with the gate, but it is a tool there that you can help with. So now we're going to uh, just bring it all together and actually get a mix going. You see at the moment a lot of the desk is muted, uh, so we'll take off the mutes and get the music going. So here's the mute coming through, and like before you can adjust the amount of an item, clear the PFL, I can adjust the amount of the item by, say, moving the guitar out of the mix, bringing it back up. Bring the uh, piano back in. So you can select the mutes as before going through. Left and right here shows what's going on. If you actually want to choose the mix for the foldbacks, you select the foldback screen. If you then hit PFL, it shows you what's coming out the foldback. Again, as before, because we've got quite a lot of, you get too much stage volume, the overall gain of the fold back needs to be quite low. So clicking 16 is reasonable. And again, as people ask for it, so in this case fold back one, they'll probably ask, we'll come a bit more vocals through here. So we'll put a bit more vocals through and take down some of the instruments. So that's a mix for fold back one. And you can do the same for fold back two, fold back three, fold back four. Oh, which has currently got nothing on for this one. Um, we've also got, um, as I say, there's the loop mix and the recording mix as well. So, set the fold back as, as before so it doesn't really peak much beyond about uh, 16 for a channel. Because that could be too much. Uh, and then just ask the musicians what they want. Um, we've now got individual mixes for, for speakers down there. Um, the speaker's got labels on so you can see what's going through. Just watch out, I've swapped over the uh, instruments and vocals one. Um, so as they, as they ask for a mix, you can adjust it here by saying a bit more vocals on there. And when you've finished, you can go back to left and right by hitting the left and right key. Uh, and that's the basics for operating it. After that, you're there, muting as you go along and controlling it in, in the way that you guys have always been doing with an analog desk.